today we're going to be going over the top six best legendary heroes in call of dragons for new players free to play players and also low spenders what's going on guys cheers my name is omniarch and i'm an official associate for call of dragons and right now it's the summer of 2023 and there's a lot of brand new players joining call of dragons and playing the game for the first time and there's a lot of heroes that you can be working on in this game already and a lot of people might be a little bit confused as to which ones are the best ones to focus on in the early game as a new player or even as a free to play player because the investments in these heroes take a really long time okay if you guys didn't know obviously all of the epic and legendary heroes in the game have four skills plus an awakening skill that you can only get once you completely max out every other skill before it and as you increase each of these skills by an additional skill point they get more powerful and in the way that you do this is by upgrading them with tokens now one thing that you might not know is that it takes 690 legendary hero tokens to completely max out a specific hero that's right for one legendary hero it is 690 of these legendary tokens now for epic heroes that's not the case for epic heroes it is 440 epic tokens so i know that sounds like a lot but that is way less than the number of legendaries you need and you're going to get the epic tokens much faster so in this video we're going to focus just on the legendary heroes but if you want another video where i talk about the best epic heroes to focus on for free to play new players then go ahead and comment down below and while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video and subscribe for more call of dragons content now when we talk about the best heroes in the game we have to define what exactly we're talking about right because if you take a look at the talent trees over here there are different talent trees for different heroes we have infantry uh heroes we have marksman heroes we have mage heroes right magic and then there's also peacekeeping there's also pvp we even have engineering heroes we have rally heroes and we have garrison heroes so in this video we are mainly going to be focusing on pvp and the specific scenario that we're going to be referring to is what's called open field pvp and all that means is that you're going to be fighting a specific enemy in the open world okay my army is out here and i am attacking another enemy in the in the world i could be attacking these if i really wanted to that's what we're going to be evaluating these heroes on in this video and the reason for that is because as a free to play or low spender or a brand new player in the game that is like 90 or 95 percent of the pvp encounters that you're going to be engaging in okay the other types of encounters are rallying an, an alliance tower or fortress or being on the defender side and garrisoning those and in the event that you are rallying or garrisoning you probably want the leader of the rally or garrison to be a whale you want them to be somebody who is you know spending a lot in the game who has a lot of maxed out heroes because the outcome of that engagement is going to be determined by the leader of the rally and the leader of the garrison so as a free to play and a low spender and a new player uh, you're not pretty much ever going to lead rallies or lead garrisons uh which is nice that is you know it's a relief right it's not something that you have to worry about so all that you have to worry about is focusing on making the best armies that you can for pvp engagements in the open world and with all of that out of the way we're gonna jump right into the list now this list isn't necessarily in any order but i do think that you know first and second place that we'll talk about later in the video are definitely better than like fifth and sixth place that we're going to talk about right now but in general all of these different heroes are going to have some really solid uses and especially for free to play players new players and low spenders okay coming in at number six is emery's okay now in general i would say that free to play and low spenders should probably stray away from melee ranged units because they're going to be on the front lines of engagements and battles however because there's only a handful of legendary heroes in the game uh and only some of them fit the criteria for 
really good value for free to play and low spenders Emery's does in fact make that list and one of the things about Emery's that is so super super good is that he has the mobility tree and he's a cavalry hero so cavalry are already very fast you can find out the base speed of a unit by coming into the troop training building and then clicking on the little eye right here you're gonna see the Knights have for tier four it's 219 base March speed now if you compare that to somebody like a swordsman they have 172 you can compare that to you know one of the vestals here they have 137 even slower right so the cavalry are already very fast but you have the mobility tree on Emery's, which if you go through the talents a lot of these talents are going to give you march speed or there will be conditions with which you increase your own march speed and that's going to be very helpful for free to play players who are finding themselves in engagements that they that is not favorable to them they can run away from those engagements okay and you can pair this with different artifacts for Emery's that will either make him go invisible or teleport him or whatever uh he's very 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 mobile as the talent tree uh suggests but that is not the only reason why he's on this list okay first of all his active skill is very vanilla it's super easy to understand it just deals a massive amount of damage to a single target now if we take a look at his second skill okay it gives him rage accumulation this is a built-in rage engine for the first five seconds of your fight that means that you're going to pop off your active skill even sooner and then either continue engaging or you can run away okay that is the purpose of this second skill but notice that his third skill gives you cavalry attack and march speed and his fourth skill gives you bonus damage and bonus skill damage to surrounding targets all four of these skills have use and utility out in the world in open field pvp combat and that is not the case for other heroes like if we look at Lilia for example she is a pay to win hero you can only get her by buying bundles but her second skill here says that she deals more damage to darklings and dark creatures which at the beginning of the game is very good because that's going to help you level up your heroes but this skill does nothing in pvp scenarios if I'm fighting another player the second skill all the tokens that I put into the skill are useless for pvp fights whereas if you look at Emery's not a single token is wasted now one thing that you could do is max out the first skill of course and if you guys didn't know the first skill is the most important skill on any hero in the game by by far it is the most important because that's where a majority of your damage your buffs and your debuffs are going to come from they have a rage cost they're not passive they're active skills okay uh and because they have a cost you can imagine they're going to be more powerful than something that is just a passive buff but regardless you could max out the first skill and then you could max out the second skill but I don't really love that about Emery's okay this second skill is it's decent but it has a 30 second cooldown so a majority of your fights and a majority of the time that you're fighting with Emery's this skill's not really going to do anything it's going to be very crucial for the opening of your fight for the first you know round of skill damage uh, and then after that you have to wait 30 seconds for for it to trigger again so what I've done and you can see here is I actually in my, in my first season um I unlocked his second and third skill before I started adding more sculptures to him with the understanding that if it lands here that's fine but if it lands here all of a sudden now I start to get more bonus cavalry attack and March speed which is nice and you'll notice here that this scales really really fast okay uh it is unfortunately a linear scaling for the attack it's not for the March speed which is good um but you know at one point it's 10 at five points it's 30 so that's going to be huge and then of course the last skill deals bonus damage and extra skill damage all of these skills are great but I do think that Emery's is the lowest here on the list next up we have to take a look at our girl Madeline Madeline is actually a lucky spin hero that comes around after Kanara okay if you guys didn't know Kanara is the first lucky spin hero she comes around for three cycles then you get Madeline for three cycles okay the cool thing about Madeline and again she's low on this list not because she's bad but because she is a melee hero which again if you're free to play do you really want to be at the front lines of a battle maybe you do and her tankiness is nice but it's it's not for the faint of heart you really have to know exactly what you're doing okay but that doesn't mean that she's bad okay if you look at her first skill first of all she gains 20 percent attack for four seconds really nice buff there she also gets a shield which absorbs 1200 shield factor okay that is huge that's going to give you a couple of turns where you're just not taking damage her second skill here says 
increases Madeline's Legion capacity by up to 15,000 and increases physical damage dealt by her Legion in the field by 10. Okay. 10% bonus damage is nice. But for those of you who maybe haven't played rise of kingdoms, which is the predecessor to call of dragons in the late game, Legion capacity is King. It is the number one way to win open field fights. Literally just bringing more troops to the battlefield is going to make you deal more damage. This is really, really nice, especially in the early game for free to play players who maybe can't max out their heroes. This might be able to, you know, sort of overcome that and, and bring you up to par. Her second skill here says increases counterattack damage by 15%. So that's the amount of damage that you're dealing out to enemies hitting you. Okay. So even if you're running away, you still are dealing counterattack damage. Uh, and all infantry units in her legion gain up to 15% health okay hp is a very valuable stat it's going to give you better trades in the open field and her fourth skill guess what this also works in the open field Bless when blessed blades shield is broken you deal 300 skill damage to three surrounding legions that's a small damage factor but it is aoe which is really really nice now just like emery's all of these skills are valuable to you in the open field. Okay. So essentially what I would recommend doing and what I'm probably going to do with my Madeline eventually is get the first skill to five. Like I said, always the most important. And then I'll probably get the second skill to five as well, because as you'll notice the first increase of the skill gives you just a single point of extra damage, but then it goes two, two, two. So you actually gain more benefit for the later skill increases here. And then when you unlock uh, this, I'll get her to five, five, one, one, then you can either unlock this third skill and get this skill to five and then unlock the fourth one, or you could just do five, five, one, one, and you could just leave her there. Coming up next on the list is Thea. Okay. Uh, Thea is another one of these, or maybe it's Thea. I have no idea, but uh, this is another one of those heroes that is very sort of universal. She's mainly going to be used as a deputy, as a secondary, right? She's going to be behind your primary commander. And what she's going to be doing is just general support duty. Okay. Uh, she gives you a really nice shield. It's almost as good as Madeline's, but she's a flying unit or she can be. And also she increases the skill damage that you deal by 15%. So if you pair her with a hero that deals a ton of single target skill damage, great news. She's going to help give you bonus damage. Her second skill here, 15% attack, 15% less skill damage taken. Very vanilla. Very good. Third skill also going to be used in the open field and fourth skill. What do you know? Also going to be used in the open field. Now, what I would recommend doing here uh, for Thea is a five, five, one, one build. That is a very cheap investment. Um, I wouldn't use universal hero tokens into Thea. Um, she's just not, I mean, she's a really great universal secondary, but I don't necessarily think she's worth those tokens. Those tokens are very rare, very precious, very expensive, and you have to use them wisely Thea, It's not really the great place to use it. Uh, but you know, if you're lucky, you'll get a bunch of her tokens here in the gold chest for free over time. So that's how you're going to be essentially accumulating her as you play. But the key here is getting the first two skills to five. Okay. The second skill gradually increases in effectiveness as you add more skills. So in other words, as you go from one point to five points, it actually triples in value, uh, which is really nice. You can't really say the same thing for her third and fourth skill, right? So just by unlocking her third and fourth skill, she gets almost half the value of those skills just by unlocking them, right? You don't have to add an, an additional point to her and you get half the value just by unlocking it. That's huge, right? You get 10% instead of 20, you get 4% instead of 10, which it's almost half, right? And here you get 10% March speed instead of 20 here again, same thing, 4% instead of 10. So almost half, uh, but the max attack also is almost half 12. So Thea is a very good value hero as a deputy. Um, again, five, five, one, one is very, very good value. And you can kind of just slap her wherever ideally with a hero that's going to be dealing lots of skill damage. Okay. Next we go into the top three and we're going to actually talk about a season two hero for the first time in this video. And that is Fragar. And I don't know if I pronounced that properly. I do apologize. She is one of the newest heroes in the game and she actually looks super cool. I really love the design here. Uh, she is also another lucky spin hero, just like we talked about with Madeline. Uh, and as you can expect by the S2 over here, she comes around only in season two and beyond. So keep that in mind. If you're a new player, you might not see her, but she will be coming up. She is a marksman hero and she does have the mobility tree. Marksmen typically aren't going to rely on mobility that much. So 
probably she'll be a deputy right but she has really really nice skills here for the same reasons that we talked about earlier her active skill does 600 skill damage to a single target so that's kind of low but she has a seven second buff which increases your normal attack crit rate by 60 percent that is a massive bonus to crit rates and essentially based on the rage regeneration uh, for most heroes you're gonna have this up pretty much all the time i mean there's going to be a small window that you're going to possibly miss this duration but a majority of the time you're going to have massive crit rate on your normal attacks and for those of you that don't know marksmen typically deal a lot of normal attack damage so the fact that you're going to be able to trigger crit hits on a lot of those is going to be huge her second skill says while in the field which remember that's what we're talking about in this video she deals up to 15 percent more normal attack damage and gains 15 percent defense again normal attack damage is king here and then her last two skills once again are great in the open field okay just by unlocking her third skill she gains almost half the value she gains 10 percent of attack instead of 20 which is half and the normal attack crit damage goes up by 10 percent all the way up to 30 percent and again the last skill here 15 percent march speed instead of 30 and reducing the target's rage accumulation speed by 10 percent instead of 20. so literally just unlocking this gets you half the value from it which is amazing so again this is another hero where you would max out the first skill max out the second skill and then you probably just want to unlock these last two skills uh and just gain a bunch of the value just by having them unlocked that's going to be huge okay now we're entering the top two and honestly you could put either of these heroes in the number one spot uh I'll explain why I put the number one hero where I did uh in just a minute but in the number two spot is Velen okay Velen is definitely one of the best heroes in the game right now uh but especially good for free to play and low spenders the reason for this is one he doesn't come around on lucky spin so you actually can get him from your gold keys for free over time amazing number two all of his skills just like this is the trend of the video all of his skills are very very effective in the open field there's no prerequisites they don't have to be in a rally or a garrison or anything like that they're always available so the first skill absolutely insane okay we deal 1200 skill damage and this is to three targets one target and two surrounding you also freeze them which reduces the march speed by 20 percent okay this is insane so first of all this is the most damage we've seen out of any hero in this video and not only that he's dealing it to three heroes that's crazy uh and the snare here the crowd control on the march speed reduction is going to be very very good this essentially if an enemy is overextended you can slow them down and now they're going to have a hard time retreating and either you or your allies can swarm them down and get a ton of value and really easy kills with that uh and again this is great for free to, play, free to play players because the snare and crowd control is something that is irrelevant to your stats right you could be a tier three player a tier four player uh and you're still gonna at least be able to reduce the enemy's march speed no matter what right uh you might lose the trade but at least you're providing value to your allies the second skill here gives you straight up 15 percent more skill damage which we want he's already dealing a ton and also gains 20 percent march speed we talked about how mages are relatively slow the march speed here is going to be critical okay you definitely want to max out the second skill here because the skill damage is where Velen shines okay so get all that as you can the third skill here almost just like others almost half value not quite um but the crit rate is almost half you get four percent just by unlocking it uh and it goes up to 15 percent extra defense which is nice but remember we're mainly dealing aoe damage here so yes the defense is very very good but it's not the primary draw to Velen, so it's nice that you just get that but it's not as useful in my opinion as massive skill damage right that's huge uh and then finally when you're in battle you have a 20 percent chance to inflict magic defense break and freeze to the target reducing their defense by 20 percent uh and march speed by 20 percent so here is yet another crowd control and a debuff okay and here you could see that you do get half the value just by unlocking this skill so that's huge I would recommend getting him to five five one one or if you want to be really patient five 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 one for most players I would say five five one one is probably fine okay and wherever the rest of your skills land is where they land that's good 
both these last skills are great and finally the number one hero on this list is Kanara. okay many of you may have suspected this and the main reason that she is above Velen, in my opinion is because she is a lucky spin hero okay so whereas if you're watching this video wondering where do i use my universal legendary hero tokens either for season one or just the universals you're much better off using them on kanara than you are for velen because like i said before you're going to get velen for free over time by opening gold chests kanara is on the lucky spin wheel and then she's gone okay you could buy her from the daily special offer i know there's other like kind of ways that you can get her uh i've been getting um tokens of her every single day actually from my vip okay my daily gift is kanara that you can see it right there bada bing so that's why she's above velen but why is she on the list to begin with okay first of all just like velen she is a ranged hero okay and that is also the case for fragar as well you notice that the top three are all ranged heroes i think it's really good for free-to-play players to be maybe a little bit further back in the in the battle here she has great talent trees here the control tree is insane the marksman tree is insane she deals 1400 skill damage to a single target so not aoe like velen but decreases all damage leading by 15 percent for five seconds that's a massive debuff okay that is a massive debuff and it's for a very long time her second skill here deals 20 percent more normal attack damage and takes 10 percent less hero skill damage remember we talked about marksman before normal attack damage is king for them uh or in this case queen and here you see it on the second skill it's incredible her third skill says all marksman units gain up to 30 percent physical attack that's a very generic skill fourth skill again also usable in the open field it says when you're hit with a normal attack you have a 20 percent chance to gain physical repost and inflict slow on the target increasing her legion's physical counterattack damage by up to 30 percent and reduce the target's march speed by up to 20 percent so this is insane you also have crowd control here you also have a snare and a slowdown just like you see on velen it's not as good uh but it is there on her kit which is huge and the extra counterattack damage is nice it, it will punish the enemy a little bit uh if they are starting to hit your kanara whether it's outrange or whatever kanara is incredible okay she's incredible she has a ton of really good pairs especially with fragar and the fact that she has such a massive debuff here and she has the control tree so you can debuff them even further you can steal the enemy rage you can silence them i i love everything about kanara and the fact that you get so much value for every single additional skill point you put in her is huge for me i took her to five five one one and then i continued adding skills into her past that point so you can see i got two and then three i think just unlocking these last two brings so much extra value in the open field it's insane and that's going to do it for the list guys i would love to hear your opinions in the comment section below what do you think of these heroes do you think that they're the best value for free to play new players and even low spenders in call of dragons I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions also while you're down there drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other call of dragons players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a call of dragons video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace